you know, Stephen Curry was, uh, you know, the, pro the, the result of a decade of trying to get into the sport of basketball. Um, you know, making, beginning with apparel, then beginning making shoes, and going back to 2008, beginning to sell shoes in 2010. Here we are five years, coming on six years later, and we now have, uh, we think, the number one basketball player in the world, the NBA's, you know, reigning MVP and world champion. So uh, with that, you know, sales will certainly follow, but the sales aren't going to happen, you know, just because people like Stefan. It needs to be a great product, it needs to be a great shoe, and frankly, we believe that we delivered that for Stefan, and really part of the reason that he was able to win the NBA, the MVP, and win his championship, um, you know, in a very small part, was because of uh, his relationship with Under Armour, and I think our trust, our belief, and, you know, um, you know, what we did with him, but, you know, he's an amazing, the thing that you'll find with all of our athletes and all of our assets is that, you know, time and time again, is that they're, they're in almost to a person, they're better people than they are actually athletes, and they're pretty amazing athletes, so we're very proud of the relationships we have. When we signed Steph is that, you know, Under Armour plan to build a billion dollar basketball business, and so prior to this, we had a little less than a hundred million dollars in revenues. Uh, and Stefan this year, you know, he's, we, we haven't released specific figures around Steph's product, but, um, you know, it's, it's a multiple. And when you speak to people in this space, you know, so much of being successful in basketball in the past has been about how much you're limiting product. Now, I'm not saying we're going to open up the floodgates with the amount of product we'll have in the marketplace, um, but we do believe that we have, you know, an amazing, you know, human and, and, and athlete in Stefan. And uh, we think there's a great desire from the, from the consumer that's going to want to play and, and participate with this product in a big way. Being a brand, you know, to carry a true signature product is really difficult. Um, you know, it's that we have, uh, you know, sports marketing, whenever they bring us an athlete and say, we want to sign this asset, the response to that is always, um, uh, everybody wants their own signature shoe. Well, the fact is not everybody can sell a signature shoe. Mm -hmm. And it's a very rare era where Stefan is, especially coming here to Asia, where I think you see him and he's not, you know, this, uh, um, he looks like some, a regular person walking down the street. He just happens to be an extraordinary basketball player. I think it's very relatable is that when kids are practicing or thinking about what they're going to do or what they're going to become, um, they know that if they just practice enough in their backyard, taking shots and doing those other things, that they too can become a, um, you know, the best in the world at something. You know, being in basketball was almost, uh, you know, an impossibility. It's because there were such deep entrenched competitors. And uh, I think, you know, we, we, we demonstrated an incredible result uh, to ensure that that wasn't the case. And, you know, this didn't happen it didn't happen overnight. You know, there's years and years and decades of building up grassroots, of signing collegiate programs, of you know, getting building relationships with athletes, of you know, pre creating the trust in Steph and A and of our product first and foremost, but also our team and the resources to be able to support them and you know, be able to bring them on a tour like this was something that um, uh, you know we saw became a perfect moment in time for us to be able to act and, and execute on. that investment's been going on since really 2006 probably uh, and frankly longer than that you know I've been traveling to Asia going all the way back to 1999 was my first trip here where I went to Tokyo uh, our largest business outside of North America is actually in in Japan and uh, you know closing on 400 million uh, US dollars in revenues right now and um, you know the, it, the the dollar investment is one that's been um, you know we've we spent a lot of years not making money but I'll give you a great example. In, in, in the Philippines, we're very new, so we're just in the last two years. Uh, we have three stores here in market, and we'll be opening more. Uh, but China's a great example, I think, as we see the opportunity for growth. Uh, we began opening our first store in China in 2010, uh, in the Raffles Mall in, in Shanghai. And uh, we went from 2010 to 2012, from zero to three million U.S. dollars. Uh, or in 2013, we did seven million U.S. dollars. In 2014, we did just under 30 million dollars. This year, the number will be over 70, 75 million dollars. So next year, the number is closer to about doubling that, about a, about 140, 150 million dollars. Mm -hmm. So you look at that growth and scale. Is that we believe, you know, China alone is a billion dollar opportunity waiting for us to happen. When you roll in Southeast Asia, it's an incredibly important part of our mix. And what we'll do is we'll define. Um, global, our definition of global is where more than half of our revenue should come from outside of our home country um, versus uh, 
Uh, and today, that rent, that's about 90% of our business comes from North America. So we have a long way to go. We have a lot of runway and a lot of places that we can go we can get to. Many entrepreneurs are typically have another job, mm -hmm. and they're thinking about being an entrepreneur. They're thinking about starting. There's something holding them back. And the one thing I can say is that you know, it's, your product will never be perfect. You know, having the courage to push print, to publish your product, and to get it out there, and to find out very simply if my product can sell. You know, it's one thing I think one of the biggest mistakes entrepreneurs make is, is it, it, it stays in hypothesis and theory uh, before they just say, you know what, if I can convince someone to just carry it in their store and tell them I won't pay them unless it sells, uh, or I won't take money unless it sells, and convince and compel them to uh, be in that position, uh, where you can find out if someone's willing to take hard-earned cash out of their pocket and pay it in exchange for the good or service you have. The second thing that I would say is um, become famous for one thing. Where most entrepreneurs lose, I believe, is that they lose focus. Um, they're doing too much. They're, they believe they start with one great idea, and they start trying to proliferate that into five or ten things because they're reading about someone else that is a huge competitor in their field and saying, well, they're making all these things, so I have to. You know, the thing that made Under Armour and the small known secret of Under Armour is that we made the first, the, the one shirt for the first five years in business, over and over and over, perfecting it, making it perfect. And it wasn't going into all these additional SKUs that uh, um, when, they, when you begin. So um, find out if you can sell and become famous for one thing. And then once you're famous, you know, the consumer will pull you in the other places that you should be, not where you think or project you're supposed to be.